if the cube world was to enter an ice age, would it then be considered an ice cube world? Like, these are the questions the Discovery Channel aren't brave enough to ask. So that bad joke cost about five and a half billion human lives. But to be perfectly honest, I would gladly pay five and a half billion more if it meant expediting the process. I never thought a planet could have so many sides and edges and corners. Oh, I didn't even realize they gave us a new freeze ray. Maybe like a stronger one? Let's try it out on Australia. It's not like anybody would notice it missing. What's up guys, welcome back to Solar Smash. The game is somehow 100% YouTube advertiser friendly, despite the fact that I'm gonna take a whole lot of pleasure from smashing Uranus. I'm not claiming to be some kind of rocket biologist, but I believe this is what they call a prolapsed planet. So Solar Smash has a big update coming to it eventually, I'm not even really sure when, but the developers were nice enough to give me access to it early, which means not only do I have a whole bunch more planets to ruin, but also a new secret planet to uncover, which means we probably have a one-sided fight to pick with Earth first. Every secret planet that we've found so far has come from reshaping our world. Right? You turn it into a disc and you get flat Earth, or you turn it into a tube and you get Donut World, or you turn it into pebbles and you get ghost world or you freeze it solid and you get the snowman you know, stuff like that and i've seen recently that in a whole bunch of youtubers thumbnails there's apparently now a cube world but the thing is there's also an unsurprising amount of clickbait and lies in people's thumbnails so i don't actually know if that's true that being said i don't need much of an excuse to try turning earth into a molten box I like how you can still really clearly see the outline of America and Mexico, and the lights are on because it's night, but no one's home. And the sun rises on a brand new world. You can see that the atmosphere is still perfectly round, but the Earth is, uh, you know, not so much. I mean, it's also not much of a cube. What the hell went wrong? Oh, I see the problem now. My laser is coming out of the center of my field of view, and then I angle it to shoot at certain parts of the Earth, which means I'm just shooting like this. It's never going to be perfectly straight. Listen, I'll be the first to admit it's not my finest work, okay? But it's pretty cuboidal. You know, it's square-ish. It's the most angular planet in the solar system. I challenge you to find one that looks more like a square. And knowing Solar Smash, they're very generous with their close enoughs, so we should get round Earth spat back out at us. Damn it! Oh my god, you guys are not gonna believe this. When I sat down to play this game today, I genuinely thought to myself, this is gonna be really fun. Now I'm gonna get to take the face of the Earth, burn off about seven and a half billion people like they're an unsightly mole, and then reshape it into this beautiful, unnatural, geometric wonder. Except that's apparently a lot easier said than done, because no matter how many times I try, it's never close enough. And I've tried a lot of times. I've been at this for 45 minutes now, and it's never good enough. And I've been screaming into the void in frustration about how I can't just whip out some kind of intergalactic protractor. There's no planet-sized ruler to help me out. Except there apparently is. It's literally a giant, perfectly square guide, which I can't shoot through. So it's impossible to screw up. I can only hit the parts that are on the outside. So if I turn this down a little bit, got it inside the planet entirely, something like this, then I should be able to get a perfectly square planet. Now, Earth, I really need you to work with me on this, okay? I know you might be a little bit pissy that I killed off all your humans, but at the same time, you should be thanking me. If I didn't fuck you up, they were definitely going to. <laughs> this is a cube the Borg would be proud of. That has to be good enough. Like, I know the corners aren't quite there, but who cares? It's still a cube. <laughs> so if we reset... Oh, there's lag. Lag is good. Yes! <laughs> We've got, uh... Cube world, I guess. 
Yeah, it is called Cube World. Okay, so a bit of a predictable name, but it's exactly what I was hoping for. An unnatural geometric wonder in space. Civilizations will come from all edges of the galaxy to witness its corners. Except, hopefully their Uber knows a shortcut, otherwise they probably won't get here before I blow it up. If a cube world was to enter an ice age, would it then be considered an ice cube world? Like, these are the questions the Discovery Channel aren't brave enough to ask. So that bad joke cost about five and a half billion human lives, but to be perfectly honest, I would gladly pay five and a half billion more if it meant expediting the process. I never thought a planet could have so many sides and edges and corners. Oh, I didn't even realize they gave us a new freeze ray. Maybe like a stronger one? Let's try it out on Australia. It's not like anybody would notice it missing. Oh, now that's a lot of damage. Okay, so it's not an ice ray, and I don't think we have enough flex tape to fix that. I've put a fair few holes in planets before, but never with that much ease. It was like a kid sticking its finger through a cake. What the hell is this thing? I'm gonna try that again because I didn't really see it coming, but we're gonna use a fresh cube world this time because I wanna make sure it wasn't some kind of reaction with the ice. If I just aim and fire, it's one tap and goes clean through the planet every single time. That seems a little bit absurd. Can it go from like corner to corner? Yeah, it sure seems so. <laughs> it's like a knife through butter. What if I tried slowing down time and then throwing a moon or two or maybe three at this planet? <laughs> then I should be able to switch over, speed time back up and... Oh, no more moons. I mean, we saw the one evaporate, but there were two more coming behind it. We never even got the chance to see them. So this thing is completely unstoppable. Unless the only thing in the universe that's stronger than a real thick planet with a whole bunch of space material blocking it is the machine world, the Dyson Sphere, and its fancy little shield. This thing has been an immovable object for a very long time. So I'm wondering if we have it meet an unstoppable force, then maybe it, it'll actually stop it. Wait, really? Uh, okay. Well, that's a testament to the technology. It keeps stopping it. I mean, it's going to break down eventually. You can only take so many, but that is absolutely shocking. All right, no more shield. I guess that means one shot clean through, took out the star in the middle. <laughs> yep. To be expected, that was still incredibly impressive, though. The weapons don't even have names attached to them, so, like, I have no idea what to call this thing. Like, I'm leaning towards a proton cannon, or a cannon in general, because it's not like the laser, it just fires in one giant burst. And we've seen that it can vaporize a moon, but now I'm wondering, could it vaporize Flat Earth's moon? Oh... Okay, well, we heated it up, and now it's gonna go for a stroll to cool off. <laughs> oh, and we had a bit of collateral damage there. Sorry, South America. I, I think this technically means that the oceans are gonna leak out. That's how Flat Earth works, right? I mean, we'll make eternal darkness their main priority. How about that? I would say that the sun is gonna shake it off. Uh, really? I wasn't expecting that tiny star to pull a Taylor Swift. Again, we kind of ruined the edge of the world, but... Um... Did the sun just disappear? What just happened? Maybe it took a while for the light to finally reach me? <laughs> it just poofed! Oh, that's not good. This is actually a first, so if we damage Flat Earth, it's damn impressive, I'll give it that much, holy crap. But when I try to reset the universe, it goes back to being its typical childlike perspective of the world, but we don't get the sun or the moon back. 
guess they don't feel like coming back, or, or the rest of the galaxy for that matter. We're just kind of floating around in the void now. <laughs> How did I break reality? I think this is actually going to look really cool without a sun or a moon or anything behind us. If I slow down time, and then I very quickly fire and pause, then... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, that's what's happening. It's normally in the blink of an eye, but it's like these weird concentric rings. I still don't fully understand what it is, but it's damn powerful. You can even see that the inside of our planet here is like super, super hot where it's being hit. It's like white. It would cool down if I unfroze stuff. Go back to being kind of orange and red-ish, but that's awesome. Did we get anything else new with the update? I haven't even been checking. I, I haven't even gone to any of the other new worlds, come to think of it. Oh, wow. I really broke things way harder than I had expected. We're not getting a sun or a moon or anything with regular planets now. And if I fire through round Earth, great, we've got a whole bunch of damage. That's still incredibly impressive. I reset and it goes back to flat Earth. Except it's got round Earth's atmosphere for some reason. I might need to do a hard reset on reality real quick. That's better. We've got light. We've got everything spinning again. You know, if the universe ever breaks, you just gotta unplug it and plug it back in again. But this is Uranus. I'm sure you're all very familiar with Uranus. I want to give it the rock test. If we throw a tiny rock at it, then I'm pretty sure this is actually supposed to be very gassy. And that's not meant as a joke, but incredibly ironic. And that didn't really do much, so let's try multiple rocks. Are we getting anywhere? It might not be all gas. It feels like we're hitting something solid down there, so maybe just a really thick atmosphere. It's like pea soup. How about we throw the biggest rock? I've got a moon for you. Or the Earth. I love it when I get to throw the Earth at stuff. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's about seven and a half billion humans, and the hole did not even last long enough for me to finish the sentence. Okay. Do you think all the chunks that are flying at me are Earth chunks or Uranus chunks? Which I believe you call dingleberries. We've definitely seen gassy planets before, but I can't remember what solution we came up with. Was it the black hole? Can we just suck up all this atmosphere, get out of the way, see what that rocky underbelly looks like? Can kind of see it, but not quite. And I would imagine that's going to fill in and completely tank my frame rate. Oh, right. We get rid of atmosphere, and then for it to fill in, it gets a little tiny bit smaller every time. You can really notice up around the buttons, it's definitely shrinking right now. So it's only a matter of time. I don't really feel like spending a lot of time, though. I got an idea. How about we use our fancy proton cannon to rip Uranus a new anus? I would imagine that this will make quick work of things. There you go. So now we've got a bit of a cross section. You can see where the gas stops and the rock starts to shrink back up. Whoa, what? I kind of figured that Uranus would be really good at puckering, but I didn't think the hard parts would be able to do that. Uh, how the hell is it able to move the stone? There's so much to it that it's tanking the frame rate. <laughs> Shrinking real quick, too. If I keep this up, then we can't be left with much. I kind of want to leave the center intact, so how about we just fire around the outside? Oh yeah, you can rapid fire this thing. Okay, well that's good to know. Bye bye atmosphere! There's no way there's gonna be anything left after this. Right? You gonna shrink back down? You gonna show me something cool? You weird little globby space fart? Anything at all? Oh. Okay, yeah, we've got a bit of a hole. I think that would have been one of my earlier shots, but... It's gotta stop eventually, right? Why is it throbbing? Oh, ew! Seriously, why is it throbbing? <laughs> I, 
I said it was a space fart, not a space cock. Oh wait, no, it stopped. Okay, so there's the inside of Uranus. I'm neither a space biologist nor a doctor, but there you go, colonoscopy well, complete. I want to head down the road to Saturn real quick to see what the proton cannon can do to some of these rings. I don't think I can fire on the rings directly, but if I line them up in front of the planet, then I might be able to evaporate the rings along with the planet. Yup, on both sides too. Got a solid chunk out of both. And they're not gonna fill back in, they're just gonna kind of scatter. Crazy. This thing is so fast and so powerful, and these gas planets are so annoying. Let me enjoy my damage. <laughs> okay, you know what? You asked for this. I am gonna try to cut you in half using the proton cannon. You don't deserve your rings. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah, that was uh, surprisingly quick. Oh, uh, where are you going, Saturn? Really shrinking up on me there, bud. And the rings will regenerate because when the planet gets smaller, the rings get condensed. All right, and again, it's it's due with a weird throbbing thing. Eh, I don't like it. What are the odds I can use the proton cannon to erase my mistakes? I really just want everything to go away. I'm trying to shoot at the sun right now, but it won't let me. Okay, well, fortunately, I should be able to shoot through Saturn at the sun. <laughs> if I do something like this, then I, I might be able to hit it. It's kind of tricky, actually. Come on, I'm so close. <laughs> or maybe it actually doesn't work. I feel like I'm just off by a, a couple hundred thousand million kilometers. Just barely. Okay, one more shot. We don't have a whole lot of Saturn left to line up. Uh, no? All right, well, this was a rather expensive experiment. <laughs> really sorry about this, Saturn, but uh, now we know. Proton cannon, no good against the sun, unless everything has been removed from being able to... No, never mind. The laser can still foobar the sun. Okay, yeah, like I said, just get rid of my mistakes. If there's one thing I noticed about this game, it's that Bob Ross is wrong, okay? It's proven that. There are no happy little accidents. There are only mistakes, and the sun is the only way of getting rid of those mistakes. <laughs> we could just forget they ever happened. No more happy little bushes for anyone. If you have absolutely no idea what we're looking at right now, this is Ghost World. It's what happens when you get a whole bunch of giant space ghosts to fist the Earth. No lube, they just go in dry and then eventually end up with Jello Planet. I can't remember if we tried to freeze it, though. You would think that freezing something like this would be really interesting, but it doesn't stand out in my mind, possibly because it doesn't seem to work. Weird. You would think that something that looks so liquidy would be able to go solid, but I guess not. Come to think of it, aiming at the sun through this thing would be a hell of a lot easier. What if we tried something like this? I mean, how can I miss? Honestly, I'm way off. It's because of the angle thing that I talked about earlier, but there's just no way of really, like, accommodating that. You, c you can't really guess. I don't think there's going to be a grid to help me, but we're doing a hell of a lot of damage to this weird planet. <laughs> just clean holes right through. I think the laser does that too. Okay, calm down, universe. Oh, that's not good. One too many proton shots. Uh, I'm firing the laser right now, but you wouldn't be able to tell. Hello? Oh, there it is. Okay, yep, this might require another hard reset. <laughs> I, I think? It's not letting me do anything. The universe has locked me out of control. What is happening right now? It really doesn't appreciate me ruining things today. It's like it's attached to the solar system or something. Please, please, give me control. Hello? Well, I finally managed to wrestle control back, so you better believe as punishment, I'm gonna fire 100 maximum powered nukes at Uranus. See how you feel about that, universe? You won't like the solar system so much once its finest feature has been turned to glass. <laughs> yeah, that's the good stuff. Man, the gas ruins everything. 
<laughs> I just want to see craters and molten damage, but instead it's literally like trying to karate chop a fart. It doesn't matter. You know what? I was about to end the episode and then it dawned on me that the snowman has given me so much trouble over the course of this series. It was one of the first secret planets that I discovered and it's just solid rock. It's the exact opposite of Uranus. It is so difficult to destroy or do any amount of damage to, but now we have a pretty unstoppable damage dealer. So how about you open real wide for me, big guy? What's your exact bottom? Somewhere around about here? I would imagine? Holy crap. I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell by looking at him, but that was uh, pretty devastating. <laughs> oh, okay, I could absolutely get used to this new weapon. It is just the be all end all. Anything gives you trouble, you're not sure you could deal with it? Just turn to the proton cannon and turn your target to dust. All right, you know what? I think that's going to be it for this episode of Solar Smash, guys. And there is more to this update. There are more weapons, more planets, more things to do and stuff to blow up. So if you guys want to see more, as always, be sure to leave a like in this video. Leave a comment letting me know and I'll return for one of my favorite series. Honestly, I love this game. But thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.